This is Bruce Friedman of Adult Site Broker, and welcome to Adult Site Broker Talk, where each week we interview one of the movers and shakers of the adult industry, and we give you a tip on buying and selling websites. This week we'll be speaking with Zach Osborne of Exclusive Life. Adult Site Broker is proud to announce the launch of our new website at adultsitebroker.com. We've added some enhancements to the site, such as FAQs and a complete new platform. The look and feel of the new site are nice and up to date. The new site also has links to our marketplace and affiliate program. Plus, don't forget ASB Marketplace, the first platform where you can buy and sell adult sites and domains for free. ASB Marketplace allows buyers and sellers the chance to come together on properties that are valued below our company's minimum of $50,000. Don't pay for other marketplaces when ASB Marketplace gives you this service for free. Visit ASBMarketplace.com and sign up as a seller or as a buyer today. And of course, there's ASB Cash, the first affiliate program for an adult website brokerage where you can earn as much as 20% of our broker commission referring sellers and buyers to us at Adult Site Broker. Check out ASBCash.com for more details and to sign up. Now let's feature our property of the week that's for sale at Adult Site Broker. We're proud to offer for sale a growing and stable European tube network. The sites went online over 10 years ago, and the traffic has grown every year. All of the traffic is from SEO. No traffic has been purchased. This is a great opportunity for a potential buyer to add to the traffic immediately. Because of the high quality of the content, targeted to the German and Italian languages, Google has placed the website in good search positions. There are over 600,000 hosted videos. Around 400,000 of them are uniquely titled. There are also about six months of videos already translated and ready to upload, so the new owner will have an easy transition. This is an opportunity for the buyer to get stable traffic and easily grow if they put some effort into new SEO techniques and buy traffic. Only $595,000. Now time for this week's interview. My guest today on Adult Site Broker Talk is Zach Osborne of Exclusive.Life. And let me spell that. It's E-X-C-L-U-S-V dot life. Zach, thanks for being with us today on Adult Site Broker Talk. My pleasure, Bruce. Pleasure's all mine. Now, Zach is a uh, programmer, web developer, and photographer in Northern Australia who's been working in the adult industry for over 10 years. He started as a local event photographer doing casual boudoir shoots for friends and acquaintances. This transformed into shooting for an adult website in Australia, then creating his own adult website and finally pivoting to support adult content creators who were struggling with monetizing their social media, which is where Exclusive.Life was born. So, um, yeah, you know, an an obvious first question is you talk about uh, creators struggling with this whole OnlyFans thing, and we're we're recording just a few days after the announcement, maybe a week after the announcement. Um, what impact do you see that having on your business? Oh, I was I prepared for this question, Bruce. Um, <laughs> oh, well, at the moment, I'm an advocate for a more critical reading of uh, whatever the internet has been throwing at us in this regard. Mm-hmm. You see a lot of models and sex workers and their unions. They're definitely not doing enough research into it. Mm -hmm. Uh, OnlyFans has changed their policies and it's likely due to stakeholders decisions right Uh, it's from what I understand it's nothing to do with MasterCard or pulling out or anything like that right Um, so there is speculation of every possible every possible kind being thrown around Mm -hmm. uh, and we definitely all need to calm down and have a look at this critically rather than emotionally sure Uh, I'm not here to throw shade Mm -hmm. on anybody but yeah Uh, it's it's much like the pandemic, it's uncertain times. Yeah, yeah, most definitely. So tell me more about what exactly is Exclusive.Life. Uh, Exclusive Life is a premium social media platform, um, I guess is the best way to put it. Mm-hmm. Um, it gives content creators the best chance or a chance to monetize their co- content. 
we support a large range of con content creators such as models, photographers, um, musicians, artists, writers, vloggers. If you can create it, you can put it on Exclusive Life. Hmm. So how did it all begin? Well, I, oh, a while ago now, um, 2011, probably, yeah, close to 10 years. Wow. Close to 10 years. Um, I started shooting content um, and recruiting talent for a small Australian website here called Aussie Amateurs. Okay. And um, I worked, I, I mostly hired uh, like backpackers and traveling, uh, traveling models and stuff like that. And I would do the photography work and edit it at a discounted rate if I was able to use the content myself. So I had a license for myself as well. Sure. After a little while of shooting, I started my own website, Queensland Girls, in early 2012. Mm -hmm. I, kept, I kept doing some photo shoots um, and video for Aussie Amateurs. And at the time, I was also uh, running my own small web development company, building websites for local local businesses and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So managing um, a website was not outside of my skill set. <laughs> uh, things kept getting busier and busier, and I was shooting um, three to five times a week, um, mainly a in, yeah, it, <laughs> shooting mainly in outside um, private outdoor locations. Mm -hmm. But uh, here where I am, we sort of have two seasons, wet or dry. <laughs> uh, so. Sounds like this place. <laughs> <laughs> So when it was a bit uncertainish whether uh, friends or people I know would lend me their living room or their bathroom or something like that, that looked a bit nice to give a bit more of a nicer backdrop. And then after that, uh, we just it sort of just kept growing. Um, through chance, I actually then became a caretaker of a brothel. Hmm. Um, a, friend, a friend of a friend was the president of a small investment company. And that that investment company owned the building of the brothel, so they rented it out to brothel license holders. Hmm. Um, and the lease had just ended, and there was no interest in anybody picking it up again. So through a, like a quick little meeting and stuff like that, and the connections, they gave me the keys and said, "Use it however you like, hmm. but uh, just just look after the look look after the yard and the gardens, keep it clean." And keep it ready for the next tenant whenever they whenever that comes. Hmm. This brothel, it was way over the top for what I was doing at the time. Um, hmm. It had like a reception booth, office, staff room, staff bathrooms, big lounge area, car park, and then it had its five service rooms, hmm. and like they all had their own themes, like uh, Arabian room, French, Oriental, Safari, and like a BDSM bondage type room called mm -hmm. the forbidden room mm -hmm. um, most most of the decor was taken out with along with the tenants but there was still some stuff left behind which uh ser served as really good inspiration for future photo shoots that we were doing at the sure. time um and then oh yeah i worked out of the brothel for about 18 months uh, before the lease got picked up again so the, who knows how long the investor guys lost money out on but <laughs> more gain for me but it was it was such a great place to have um I would always have any meetings, business related, photography related, I'd have meetings at this brothel. And so it was like this huge, big building just for myself. Um, we'd have parties, sort of like end of end of financial year parties, Christmas parties, all that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, even a local swingers group contacted me and asked if they could have a, one of their annual parties there, <laughs> um, which which they did. Um, then the the investor type people, they said to me, you know, you, you can, you can rent it out to them. Yes. But you have to be there and anything that happens is on you. <laughs> um, and I was like, well, go to a swingers party. Okay. Um, but, uh, yeah, we had a bit of a, we had some wild times there. I bet you did. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I, I, I moved, started coding up, um, pay sites for models and other photographers who wanted to get into the online industry. Uh, helping them get set up with billers and the initial content uploaded. I worked with a lot of up and coming models at the time, um, a lot of Australian Australian content creators, Kiki Sucre, Monty Lux, Bonnie Tonic, mm -hmm. uh, some of which I have uh, I've been I'm still really good friends with. So, um, how did those uh, those types of relationships help you to move forward? Well, a large uh, a large portion of the girls I worked with were also sex workers um like models strippers escorts mm -hmm. 
all, all the, the the usual fanfare. Um, often I'd get called uh, from from these girls saying, "Hey, Zach, I'm in town, and you know I've got a job on, or you know all that sort of stuff." So I'd offer them to come stay at my house. You know, I'd drive them to and from their jobs. Hmm. Uh, uh, it offer them a good home cooked meal because I know when you're traveling, you know, like these girls, they tend to just eat fast food and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, and in in their downtime, we'd um, arrange photo shoots and it was just around the house or where, wherever wherever suits. One time, uh, speaking of photo shoots, one time uh, Kiki Sucre was visiting, and in between jobs, she wanted uh, to, we wanted to make some chocolate cake. Mm-hmm. Um, so we decided let's turn the baking of this cake into a photo shoot. Uh, so Kiki's vegan and not a baker, and neither am I. Uh, <laughs> so we're walking around the grocery store on our phones trying to look up like the best vegan chocolate cake recipe uh, so we could try and actually make a cake for this photo shoot. And uh, in the end, yeah, the cake turned out pretty good, but the photos were a lot better than the cake. <laughs> now, I, I, I still work with and keep in contact with a lot of the girls. Um, and if I'm traveling in their area, I let them know, or they, they know just through general conversation. Um, they usually invite me over to their house for dinner and drinks, or we go out somewhere and just have a good catch up. Sure. And, uh, it's really good. It's really nice. Cool. So you recruited talent, you produced content, you built your own site, you made sites for other people. You looked after a brothel, which I think is awesome. Um, so what happened next? Yeah. So 2016, um, I noticed a trend where the girls just the models they just didn't want to have to rely on like myself as a photographer or other photographers uh to create the content and at the time 2016 mobile phones were starting to come into their own and and digital cameras was entry-level digital cameras were quite quite good Mm -hmm. um so this whole self-shot content was definitely a strong alternative for producing content but uh, there was also another sort of trend happening at the same time. Um, models and the newly named content creators didn't want that didn't want to wait for their website to be made because, as you know, websites can take a while to build code, you know, test all that sort of stuff and sure. build up the content. Yeah, and they didn't want to have to go through the hassle of uploading content to the website, uh, writing posts and all that sort of stuff. They wanted to just deliver their content straight to the hands of their consumers, their, their fans. Mm -hmm. And, um, this was sort of the beginning of the premium Snapchat revolution. You could call it. Sure. Uh, You know, um, premium Snapchat, if you're not familiar, it's where, uh, creators charge access to, uh, a private Snapchat story and then they can, um, you know, you make a payment, they, they add you and you get to see this private story. Mm-hmm. And so some of these, like a lot of the girls I'd worked with were already in this premium Snapchat sort of situation. And so I asked them, I said, how how can we improve this? Like this seems extremely clunky from a programmer's perspective and even a, um, uh, a, a consumer's perspective. Sure. And so they talked back and forth about it. And, you know, one of the problems they had was when do we remove someone from our story like you know are we we 30 dollars lifetime subscription you know where where, where do we stand on that and then another friend she said that she had five thousand dollars take frozen in her paypal account because at the time um this was against paypal's terms and conditions as it still is (laughs) yes so I, i i sat there and i took some notes and i thought this could be we can do this better and by mid 2016 i launched what i think no one's corrected me yet the first premium Snapchat notification system called Mm. Sexy Snaps. Mm. Um, So it provided the creators the ability to set up recurring subscriptions. Um, There was a small little spot there to upload some um, previews and member member content. Um, So people had something to look at while they were waiting to be added because you still had to be manually added to Snapchat and removed from Snapchat, you know. So there was still that manual time, the waiting the, uh, so you had to soothe the instant gratification. Yeah. Um, and it was all through like a safe adult uh, payment gateway and it all got dispersed correctly and sort of, you know, no chance of any payment accounts being locked or anything like that. And uh, yeah, so Sexy Snaps took off. Um, in the first 12 months, we did $150,000 in sales, mm. which wow. 
was yeah, it was kind of a big deal for for me. That was the first time that something of mine had taken off seriously. Um, it's a great and, start. Yeah, and so we obviously we had I paid the girls um, their share of that hundred and fifty, but of course. Yeah, um, and we just had a steady, steady flow of uh, creators signing up, using the platform, promoting it. Um, some girls were even taking their payout statements just straight into um, car dealerships and and that sort of stuff and just saying, hey, look, I'm, I'm earning this much money. And they're getting fully fledged car loans, or like brand new car loans, based on the income of Sexy Snaps. Gotta love it. <laughs> yeah. So now, how did you go from Sexy Snaps to Exclusive Dot Life? I had made Sexy Snaps in a way where it was 100% cloud based. Um, I could approve new applications. I could set profiles up. I could manage payouts, all that sort of stuff from anywhere in the world as long as I had my laptop and the internet. Um, so that gave me a, a, a bit, a lot of freedom. Um, I traveled quite a lot. And uh, in 2018, I think it was, it's all a bit blurry now, a long time ago, um, I was had just finished traveling through Cambodia, Vietnam, Laos, and then I was in Thailand. Ah, uh, yes. And I, yes, um, I had done a day's worth of touristing, and I was on the train back from, uh, what do you call it out west there, um, Kanchenburi. Okay. And I was on the train, and I thought, oh, I'll just... Um, flick the old Snapchat map like not- location on so I could make all my friends a bit jealous about where I am and hmm. that sort of thing. And the, the train, you know, in a city, it, it's not that interesting looking out the window. Um, I wouldn't and, know. Yes. My wife's been on it. I have, and I won't t- touch those or trust those damn things. <laughs> uh, the real, the real ride is from uh, the overnight train from Chiang Mai to Bangkok. That's I'm, the real ride. I'm going to take your word for that. Um, and yeah, shortly after I posted some photos, I got a message from Apple, a Thailand based content creator, um, that's on, that was on sexy snaps at the time. And after a bit of back and forth, she, she's like, Oh my God, you, you in Thailand? I said, yeah, I am. And, um, she said, Oh, meet me at, um, meet me after, after, after work at seven o'clock for some drinks. I said, Oh, that sounds pretty fun. I'd be shown around Thailand excuse me, a bank, Bangkok by a local. You know, not many people get that opportunity. Sweet. She's like, yep, yep. Meet me at the Hooters bar in Bangkok. And I'm like, mm-hmm. yeah, okay, sure. I, I know exactly where that is. <laughs> <laughs> right in, right in Soy Nana. <laughs> yep. Uh, so 7 p.m. rolled around and I was sitting just on the veranda watching the traffic go by. Um, I, the, I know exactly where that is too, because there was a bar, there was a bar that used to be there before, um, it's, uh, right outside the, you know, what the hell's the name of that crap hotel it's in and, uh, it might be the Nana hotel. Yeah. And I, I used to sit, I used to sit on that balcony and watch, uh, the world go by translated all the beautiful girls go by <laughs> all the beautiful girls and boys. Yeah. Well, them too. <laughs> um, but yeah, so she, she met at seven o'clock. She messaged me and she said, I'm on, I'm on my way down. Um, order me a large pint of Asahi. I was like, oh, okay, sure. So I got myself one and she got one too. Yeah. So within 10 minutes, she was there at this tiny little Thai girl Apple that I'd been talking with uh, for years almost. She'd been on the platform for well, 18 months, two years. Mm-hmm. And uh, she just grabbed this pint and she just chugged it, just completely just demolished this pint of Asahi. I thought, wow. What a what shot. Am I in? <laughs> And then she's just so excited, just full of energy. She's, Where do you want to go? What do you want to do? And I said, oh, I'm, I'm a little bit hungry because I hadn't eaten anything since since lunch. I'm sort of quite hungry. She's, uh, she goes, what, what, where? And I'm like, I don't know. It's, this is your town. You show me. You show me. She's like, okay, I know the spot. So great, just, great sushi place across like, the street, by the way. But anyway, go ahead. <laughs> we just, we just zigzagging through all these little these little streets and there's traffic. It's just chaos. Um Nothing like I've experienced before, really. Um, and she took me to one of this these, this weird little restaurant, like a, a Japanese style restaurant, um, where you you know you sit down and cook your own food. And mm, excuse me. And um, 
Yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah, I know. The, I think I, I think I might know the place too. <laughs> anyway, the restaurant it was just so busy, and um, they they sat sat us down the back, and you know, she's asked me, she's like, "What do you want to eat?" And I'm like, "Oh, whatever, what, whatever you want." You know, I said, "I'll, I'll my my shout, I'll, I'll buy this one," and I because I couldn't read the menu; it was just all in funny, funny. Can't read squiggles, you know. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, I have that trouble too. <laughs> Anyway, so she confirms with me, like, do you eat this? Do you eat that? And I was like, yeah, no, definitely not that. Um, and I said, just go ahead. And she ordered, like, what felt like a hundred things. And I was like, wow, are we going to are we gonna eat all this? Anyway, so we were drinking and talking and having su- such a great time that uh, when the food finally came out, we didn't want to cook our own food. We, she just asked the waitress, you know, in Thai, do you mind cooking cooking some of it for us so we had this weird time in a cook your own food place but then we had someone cooking it for us <laughs> so during her catch up um our catch up we're just talking about our life my life her life how we got to where we are and she started telling me about her experiences using sexy snaps now because it was all run through snapchat uh, there was zero moderation from um my side like i had no idea what was going on i was just taking payments and dispersing the payments sort of thing. I had no idea. Sure. Nothing about the interactions at all. Um, and so she told me, she's like, people are really mean. Like <laughs> they sign up based on her previews and then that's not what the previews are. And, you know, she's just, she's like, they're really mean. And I handled all the complaints from both the, uh, both sides, the creators and the members. If any member came to me and said, oh, you know, I was blocked by such and such. I would have to go to someone, to that creator, and say, "Why did you block this person?" And back, you know, it's a bit of a back and forth. He said, she said thing. Mm-hmm. But usually, most of the time, the creators could provide me screenshots of what this person was saying. And if it was bullying or harassment of any type, I was just like, "No, you're done." To the member, you're like, you know, there's a no one deserves to be treated like that. I agree. I was, she asked me, he's like, is there a better way to be able to report these members and, you know, sort of combat this negative experience a little bit more? And I was like, Phew. but uh, funny enough, most of the bullies were people who signed up via promo codes or really, really low specials. Mm-hmm. Um, That's a the surprise. Cheap Charlies. <laughs> the cheap Charlies. So perhaps I don't know, maybe they just signed up just to ruin someone's day. But um, yeah, Apple continued. She mentioned that she's going to stay with her friends, uh, friends and family, um, for a couple of weeks, and she wanted to be able to keep providing content for, um, her, for her fans and members. And this was before you could upload, um, saved snaps to Snapchat. Mm-hmm. Before you could upload saved snaps, and so I asked her what would be ideal, and so I Jimmy rigged up a, a way for her to upload. Um, some of her previous content into her members area. Hmm. Uh, so that was that was kind of, you know, cool. But then she said, like, well, could there be more? Could, can we comment? Can we like? You know, all that sort of business. We, we, you know, we've gone this big circle. They don't want the girls, the content creators, don't want to wait for photographers. They don't want to have to manage their own pay site. They want to do it all through an app. Now they all want to do it through an app, but also upload stuff that hmm. they shot with their phone we've almost gone full circle again. Right. And so, so something I had, I got the wheels turning and I thought something has to be done to accommodate for all of this, all of this at the same time. Uh, so once I returned home from this trip, um, I started drawing up plans, notes, um, and getting ready for uh, sexy snaps 2.0. I, I named it, but I knew that a project of this size, especially with a social media style backend, I, I couldn't do it alone, especially if I was going to code it from the beginning and um, have buy nothing off the shelf, uh, 100% custom sort of thing. Right. So so I teamed up with a fellow programmer in New Zealand. Um, he's well known, He was well known at the time for his reverse engineering uh, escapades on various well-known APIs. And yeah, we um, we got in and we started planning Sexy Snaps 2.0, or as we call it today, Exclusive Life. That's cool. Um, now, where is Sexy Snaps now? Or is it? Uh, Sexy Snaps? Um, after a, uh, a relatively painless, uh, painless in quotations, um, <laughs> migration of the existing Sexy Snaps creators, um, we just 
uh, the, the sexysnaps.me domain just points to a not safe for work landing page for exclusive life just to re-help with any on, any further onboarding if any of our links are still active out there in the wild. Okay. And I actually look, I was actually following this up uh, earlier this week. Um, I think that that, that link, that particular redirect has had over 130 unique redirects, 130,000, I should say. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was going to say 130 wouldn't impress me too much. <laughs> no, 130,000. Uh, yeah. Redirects. Excellent. Excellent. So how is exclusive life different from sexy snaps? Different to sexy snaps. Well, exclusive life was made with more of the creator's needs in mind. Uh, we worked with the creators of sexy snaps, uh, finding out what they wanted and what Sexy Snaps and other platforms at the time were missing. Um, one of the recurring things and themes was that they wanted it to be faster, faster setup times, you know, faster, easier to apply, get approved, you know, just get set up and start making money. They wanted it, you know, bang, bang, bang now. Mm-hmm. And yeah, now you can exclusive life, you can upload content, people, you f- f- fans and followers can like, comment, follow. Um, all that sort of business. There's a lot more tools. Um, Exclusive Life also now has staff all in many different uh, time zones. So applications, payouts, support requests, content moderation all happens with very, very little wait times. Yeah. Every every post is viewed and moderated pretty quickly after it's uploaded. Um, And this ensures that no content no content uploaded, comments, etc. are breaking our community guidelines. Um, and this, we want to try and keep exclusive life as safe and friendly as possible, I guess. Sure. Okay. So how do you handle the money to pay out creators? Well, handling the payouts and whatnot, uh, that's all very important. It's something I, I, I find I'm very passionate about myself. Um, being in sure. Australia, international banking is not friendly to Australians. Um, hmm. It's really? very difficult. Yeah, uh, fees are just really high. You can't. It, it's just not fair. Hmm. Um, it's the best way I can I, I, I can explain it. And a, a lot, a majority of our content creators are Australian because that's where I am. That's where all my friends are. You know, so we sort of we're de- we've got a a high population of Australians on Exclusive Life. Mm-hmm. Um, but one thing I can't stand is creators having to reach a goal or a minimum amount to before they can ask for their money, you know, and also have to wait, you know, oh yeah, you, you made this, this sale, but you're going to have to wait, you request a payout and then it's going to be, you will approve it in two weeks time. Yeah. Like I get, that's not fair. Like some of these creators, they're, they're relying on the, these earnings to pay their bills and their rent and, you know, sure. general life expenses. Right. Uh, so we were early adopters of the, the BitSafe platform. Okay. Uh, and so far, it's been really good. Uh, payouts from your exclusive account to your BitSafe account are fast, like immediate and free. There's no fees BitSafe to BitSafe. Nice. Um, they have, I think like some of the others, they have a, a, a debit card attached to your, your BitSafe account. Mm-hmm. Um, so the creators, they can use the, the debit card online or in person and not have to wait for the wire transfer to get to their bank account and in australia that could be from america that's you know you can look at three to five days Mm. so it it definitely um definitely speeds up the process one of our content creators bonnie she when she had just received her bit safe card she um got it all activated and all set up it was a friday afternoon and she requested a payout and uh, we approved it and then she used that, that 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 card her bit safe card online to order pizza and some drinks for a Friday afternoon <laughs> to be delivered. And from requesting the payout to pressing confirm and payment confirmation was 15 minutes. Nice. You know, so from your available balance on a internet platform where you sell content to being able to buy real tangible objects mm-hmm. and have it delivered to you within 15 minutes is, you know, that's, that's, that's pretty, pretty ground, ground shaking, pretty, <laughs> That's that's you know, a, uh, that's amazing. So, are there any perks for exclusive life creators? 
Absolutely. Uh, Exclusive Life has been developing its own line of branded merchandise. Uh, we do crop shirts, booty shorts, bags, stickers. Um, I'm currently trialing a NFC style business card. So if you a uh, if you're a stripper or a dancer or something like that, or even just a really out there um, content creator, you can put the car the, biz- the business card on someone's phone and it will open up a website to your exclusive dot links page nice um so you can sort of share really quickly and easily um your profile and your links and whatnot um most most of that stuff um is available free to creators um just oh, for signing great. up and being part of the platform um sort of factored in um some of it you can purchase through the online store that we've got uh, we have a a competitive recruiter program okay. where recruiters and promoters can earn 5% of the sales and subscriptions earned by creators. Uh, okay. But all the funds you generate, all the funds you generate from creator sales are actually taken out of the exclusive life's side of it. So the 80, 80, 20 split, we actually pay our 5% out of our 20% because it's not fair to other fellow creators um to be taxed for being recruited oh that makes sense sure yeah so, it's just not fair yeah no i agree i agree so what um, sort of also have, go ahead i'm sorry sorry no, you're right we also have uh studio and influencer agreements which have bonus perks for those who can send us a larger traffic base um if they're interested in working with us very good now um what sort of content is trending at the moment? Well, on Exclusive Life, uh, we're seeing, I guess, uh, the, we're seeing trends in the shot at home style content, um, sort of like home home studio content. Mm-hmm. Uh, not the type of studio con- like content with makeup and the lights and the whole production crew, but um, more of like a real raw peek into somebody's intimate life, I guess. Sure. Um, and we're also seeing like, the social media model style self shot lewds and nudes with the filters um, that kind of you it, what you would almost see on Instagram, but just without clothes. Sure. Uh, scro- yeah. So, so right now um, it feels like scrolling through your feed on exclusive life. It's quite easy to forget that you're on a site that promotes and allows adult content and not one of the, the big social media platforms like Instagram. Hmm. That's uh, that's a nice crossover. Um, yeah. Do you think there's still a market for studio content? Oh, there'll always be. There'll always be a uh, a market for studio content. In most cases, studio content is made of a much higher quality than um, than your home stuff. I'm not discrediting the home studio people but you know like the big budgets they have the budgets and the models and the equipment and the operators and they're able to turn out a solid product every time right you know but with covid and all that other stuff that's happening um you know we're seeing a rise in the home style content oh yeah um and it's not and and it's not going away absolutely not um and we're seeing um the, the the content creators the self the home homemade self self-made content creators being invited to the large bigger studios now and you know right. getting big deals out yep. of it and that's sure just, hey that's you know i was i was reading uh i was reading an article in bloomberg about only fans and they said they have several creators that make over a million dollars a year that's that's amazing yeah <laughs> think about it um, but one thing I, I saw, um, that I thought was very interesting was a large studio, once a large, a well-known studio, they're, they're recreating the self shot social media style content. And, mm. um, it was a full, a full 51 minute feature film shot in vertical mode, you know, wow. so portrait landscape. And they even had like in the intros, they had like the Instagram story bars and the, like it. Yeah, it was just – so now we've got high-end studio stuff recreating social media self-shot style content. Interesting. I I really liked it. I thought that was very clever. 
as a photographer and videographer myself, I still work with local creators, um, lockdowns pending, um, to help make content for their pages. Um, mm-hmm. But the style they are after these days is sort of like high-end promotional editorial style content, um, almost like an extension to the social media style we've been talking about. Like it's mm. just that little bit more refined because they still want to try and keep that self-shot look, I guess. Right, right. So what do you think the overall future is of porn? This this is a pretty hot topic at the moment. Um, mm. And I, I, I really love hearing other people's opinions and views on it. I've been around a while, not as long as some, but still a little while. Um, And if you had told me when I first started, Zach, in 10 years' time, girls are going to be taking photos with their phones and uploading it to a Facebook-style website, making tens, hundreds, or even thousands, millions of dollars, I I wouldn't have believed you. Um, No. Because, you know, phones aren't that good 10 years ago, you know. But um, here we are. It happened a lot faster than 10. It was well, what, five years ago we mm-hmm. started seeing all that? Anybody now can become a content creator and start selling. That's true. Uh, it's becoming more and more socially acceptable to have one of those online side hustles. Uh, people would never consider, some people who would never consider putting um, risque photos online are now some of the world's highest earners and mm-hmm. they just didn't know it, you know. Sure. Um, and it doesn't even have to be porn. Right. Um, these days it can be bikini or lingerie pics or even erotic stories written or spoken ASMR. It's, you know, it's extremely easy to get into. All you really need is an idea, a phone, the internet, and a little bit of confidence. So, um, you think things are going to get a lot more competitive, uh, in the future? Oh, absolutely. Uh, if anything in the last 12 to 18 months has shown us, um, about growth in, popularity um and as i said becoming more and more socially acceptable to have these online side hustles the market is going to get more competitive this will make it harder for people who are just turning 18 or 21 depending on where you are i'm not sure about overseas laws Mm -hmm. um it'll make it hard for them to just who are entering the market um and it may even start putting the squeeze on already established content creators themselves Mm -hmm. um but with the right mindset and goals set, um, and anyone anyone entering the market can earn a modest living with their phone or internet. Um, and in turn, as it becomes more socially acceptable to make and sell adult content, it's also becoming so acceptable and encouraged to pay for adult content and porn. Uh, being able to buy directly from the content creator themselves, whether it's on Exclusive Life or any other of the platforms, you are supporting the, the creator individually. Um, I, you know, we have a small percentage, but most of it, our margins are small, they go t- directly to the content creator. Um, sure. And you are helping, you are helping individuals um, make the rent, buy the food, pay for schooling. Mm-hmm. And as a whole, I think that's, that's pretty awesome. Uh, you know, like, we're giving people the ability to earn, you know, some girls, some content creators are, they're earning tens of thousands of dollars and it's, it's all coming through our platform. Yeah. It's a little bit humbling, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So do you have any tips for someone either wanting to start as a creator or is already a creator? Watching from, from sexy snaps and the, the girls in the, in the early days through to now, uh, the, the biggest advice I think I can give is find your niche, find what you like doing, what you're good at, then find out what your viewers want, what what your potential members want to see you do. Mm-hmm. Uh, keep consistent, posting regularly, uh, all that sort of stuff. Interact where possible, DMs, replying to comments, going live. Mm-hmm. Use all the tools available. Like Exclusive Life gives you lots of tools. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have post scheduling. Um, we've just implemented our own link tree sort of thing. So everything's all in-house, automatic t- posting to Twitter, all that business. Um, talk to the other creators, Exclusive Life or wherever you are. You know, find, find a group of them and ask them what works for them. 
you know, get feedback, you know, cross promote yourself on other platforms. Sure. You, know, obviously you can't put everything out on Instagram and Facebook, but if you can try and keep them separate, they are very powerful marketing programs. Reddit, you know, if you know how to utilize Reddit, use it. Um, there's an untapped amount of potential earnings in reside Reddit. And utilize affiliate programs. Uh, you know, people go through a lot of work to build the affiliate and set up the affiliate programs. Mm. Use them. Take advantage of take advantage of them. Right. Now I understand you have an affiliate program. How's it different? Uh, our affiliate program is currently in a private beta. Uh, we're just still sort of testing it, looking for bugs. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's currently it's showing really promising results for the people that we uh, who are using it at the moment. Much like our, our recruiter program, our mm -hmm. affiliate program is all managed in-house. Okay. Links, promo content, statistics, it's all managed in-house. Your earnings as an affiliate go into your exclusive balance as if you were a content creator. So, you know, it's all, all kept there. It's got a few little features um, that were is really quite exciting. Um, and it's taken a lot of work to get right. Again, we're not sure. Might be the first for the industry. Hmm. Um, earlier this year, I was speaking with uh, a webcam model coach um, at one of the online trade shows that we have. Mm-hmm. Uh, X, X biz. I can't remember, can't remember which one it was now. And I was speaking with her and she said, it feels like the internet is run from behind a curtain. Webmasters, traffic deals, media buys, unless you're both a content creator and a webmaster or you have a webmaster on your team, you're going to have a hard time reaching that next level of success. Hmm. And so I was talking, you know, we had a bit of a meeting and we came up with an idea to help put the creators in charge of the business side of their profile as well. Like their, their, their sales, like they're almost like a bit of a business CEO for themselves. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to go into too much detail because it's still not released, but um, affiliate we've given the chance for creators to opt in or out of the affiliate program set their own affiliate commission rates tra on per transaction type. But one of the most exciting features is um, the affiliate offer feature. With the affiliate offer feature, um, affiliates who have signed up can browse a list of creators, filter them by name, type, tags, niche, whatever. And then they can send an offer to that one particular creator or a, a group of them, um, an offer. And so, for example, the best way to explain it is, you know, someone with a lot of Asian niched traffic can find one of our Asian themed content creators mm -hmm. and say, hey, I can send 50,000 targeted visitors to your profile. Let's do a 50-50 split on initial sales and then, you know, a 30-70 on rebills. Nice. You know, and then from there, they can sort of talk back and forth, work it out, negotiate an offer. And one, from there, once accepted, uh, all the links and all that, the statistics and that are all generated inside each user's uh, area, members' area. Sounds cool. And yeah, so yeah, it's we ho hope that you know our our content creators and future affiliates will will utilize it. Um, it's taken a lot of work um, to get it to get it there, but uh, we we think it it should be available to everyone pretty soon. Um, nice. We're thinking of bundling it with the recruiter program um, and calling it something like the Exclusive Life Partner Program or something something fun like that. Sounds sounds like a good name. So, uh, yeah. what is the future of Exclusive Life, and what's in your near future? Exclusive Life. Um, in the short term, uh, we want to finalize with all the news going on. We want to finalize a few more features to give creators more options uh, to help maximize their earnings. Uh, after that, I really want to crack into the streaming market. We've got plans drawn up for a hybrid of like a cam, <clears throat> excuse me, a cam site cross live streaming, sort of like Twitch. Cool. Um, creators will be able to stream by their mobile or desktop, um, interact with their fans, etc. cetera. Um, We've had some queries about creators opening up shop fronts and being able to send, sell branded uh, 
or printed products like calendars, shirts, W coolers. There's a TikTok trend where they're getting them um, cigarette lighters, getting like nudes printed on cigarette lighters. Hmm. They want to try and sell that. Um, even one creator, she asked if she could sell her molds of her breasts and bits, um, hmm. almost like an adult Etsy. Interesting. <laughs> Long term, uh, want to try and keep meeting the needs and ambitions of our content creators and stay committed to delivering a high quality service to our content creators. Yeah. Keep normalizing sex work, especially when it comes to the handling of sales for online content. Um, Like it's just, if a bank finds out that's what you're doing, you know, they're starting to like, especially in Australia, it's very old views. Oh yeah. Uh, They, you know, one of the big banks here says, where did you get your money from? And if you say, Oh, I did it like this, then, you know, your risk of losing your bank. And if you've got any loans with them, it just gets messy and yep. yucky. Yep. You know, to keep, keep for, for us anyway, keep trying to close the gap between social media and porn. Um, you know, because like so Instagram, the news, the news says Instagram's going to try and put in like a paywall for certain content. Keep challenging and challenging the needs, exceeding and redefining goals. Um, and for me, myself, I really want to get back into content production hmm. um, back when I started, um, expanding my skills portfolio. I've drafted up some ideas and I've got some concepts on something I really want to try and get started. Um, I think they're going to be really fun. Cool. Uh, and of course, when, when I get there and I get, get them made, I'm going to use Exclusive Life as the content delivery platform. I would hope. And uh, who knows, maybe I'll get to come back here and tell you about those projects. I look forward to it, Zach. Well, hey, thanks again for being our guest on Adult Site Broker Talk, and I'll look forward to that future conversation. Oh, it's been great, Bruce. My broker tip today is part six of what to do to make your site more valuable for when you decide to sell it later. Here's more information on what to give to a potential buyer. How well has your content been protected from piracy? And what steps have you taken to protect your content? Are you using a piracy takedown or monitoring service? These are important facts to know. What promotional tools do you offer to your affiliates? The more tools you offer, the more successful your affiliates will be. What is your traffic breakdown by country? Tier 1 countries like the USA, Canada, the UK, Germany, and Australia are the most preferred. Add in anything else that will add value to the sale of your property that you can think of, such as what custom scripts do you use? What content management system software is on your site? Do you use billing or affiliate software like NATS or MPA3? What is your retention rate? How you retain your members is of the utmost importance. How many joins and rebills do you have per day? Do you buy advertising and if so, what kind? Can your content make more money in the DVD or VOD markets, or have you already taken advantage of this opportunity? How much did you spend to produce or buy the content that's on your site? What do you believe the content is worth now? What's special or different about the website? How is it unique? Make sure and include a list of all of the websites you're selling in addition to any domains that come along with the sale. Is there anything that adds value to the sale? Provide them with any additional information upon request. Before giving a buyer any information, have them sign a non-disclosure agreement. If you use a broker, the NDA will be provided for you. Good brokers like, uh, oh, I don't know, maybe adult site broker, have a large resource of potential buyers that are looking for properties just like yours, and they know how to deal with potential buyers. They'll also negotiate the terms of the sale, such as price and any payment terms. Before closing the sale, find a good escrow service to make sure that both the buyer and the seller are protected. We have those resources, of course. We'll talk about this subject more next week. And next week, we'll be speaking with attorney Michael Fatorosi. And that's it for this week's Adult Site Broker Talk. I'd once again like to thank my guest, Zach Osborne. Talk to you again next week on Adult Site Broker Talk. I'm Bruce Friedman. Bruce Friedman.